You're listening to The Valley Current. Hey, there he is. There he is. So he has... You like my new haircut? Uh... It looks like the same one. I got it. I got it shortened a little bit. My summer oh, look. Oh, you got it short. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I did a different set of things for me. Morning, like Jack. Oh, good, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy well. Sunday. Well, that looks like a Remington. That looks like a Remington right there. Uh, oh, this one, yeah. That's beautiful. There, there are several. But then there's some on she the desk. Cowboy one too. The desk. There's one up there. Uh, one in the living room. Oh, I like the, the rifle. I like the rifle. I like the way he's got the rifle up in the air. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's real Western here. So, anyway, how's your brother? Oh, he's, he's, he's sort of slowly dying, but they're giving him a lot of morphine, so he's mostly asleep or mostly delirious. I mean, it's interesting to try to talk to him because a lot of times it doesn't make any sense at all. They, they've loaded him up with morphine, you know? That's what they do for, quote-unquote, pain management. Right. How about marijuana? Ever, I don't know if you've ever tried, tried morphine. I had it when they, no. replaced, when they replaced my hips. They said, do you want a shot of morphine because I was in pain? I said, I guess so. Is it addictive? Yeah. They said, yeah, it's highly addictive. So I said, well, you better not give me too much. I think they gave me three milligrams. My brother gets 20. He gets like 10 times what I got. There we go. I, have, I was I was flying. Oh my god! I was flying for three or four hours. It was like, really? man, that stuff is like goes right to your bloodstream. But anyway, I wanted to talk for a second about guns because your Remington remind me of this. Most of what you see here in Florida are big signs like this for pawn shops. Pawn. But what's a pawn shop? A pawn shop is a gun dealer. A pawn shop is a seller of go, used please. guns. Are you with me? It's pretty funny. Yeah. So this is what the billboards look like, but imagine the whole big billboard that says pawn shop. And you see, when you walk into these pawn shops, you see things like this. That's the Gun. Oh. That's the tweet for voting for Second Amendment rights. And they pass hey, these things right. out. Oh, it's a, Bob, it's a big culture thing here. You've got to come to Florida right. because... You're an investor, and let me tell you what I'm going to invest in. <laughs> Used antique pistols that still work. Get this. Oh, my God. 18, if it's before 1863, before the proclamation, oh no registration, no federal registration. It's considered an antique, even if it works. Even if the gun works, it's considered an antique. And you well, can fire you could fire that gun legally without having a federal registration. Well, that was consistent with the Second Amendment, meaning when we had a militia. Yes. We, there is no militia. There's no reason for the uh, application of the Second Amendment. We're way past that time. And thanks to uh, Justice Scalia, uh, we have a case that says the Second Amendment is applicable today, which, of course, it's not. But if you read the Constitution as if it were written last week, yeah, we could have uh, guns. Bob, I have to tell you, you have to spend a few weeks in Florida. You would have a totally different perspective on the Second Amendment. I'm not saying I drank this Kool-Aid, although I actually do have some Kool-Aid here with me <laughs> that I am drinking. But I have to tell you that there is an attitude that if someone gets in your face and they're literally on your porch – you blow them away. You just blow them away. You drag the body through the portal and you call the cops. And it's like killing the fucking vermin here, man. It's like killing, <laughs> it's like killing an alligator that comes out of the lake. There's alligators in these lakes. They come yeah, out of the lake. They come out of the lake. <laughs> and people kill them. And then they get they get leather boots made out of them. They get the alligator skin, <laughs> and they're very proud to say, "I killed that goddamn alligator that came out of the lake." I'm serious. That's what that's what goes on here. So your Remingtons are very reminiscent of the old West. If you were on the east coast of Florida, with all those transported New England and New York people, uh, it's quite different. Yes. The voting is different, and the voting is different. Yes, true, true. Yeah. But you know. 
you would think that the Democrats would be super organized and with what are they like eight swing states and they would get yes. enough people who are liberals to move for at least a year <laughs> to those swing states. No, no, it's not crazy. This is not totally crazy. I mean, this is not that crazy, Bob. I mean, look at all the hoops that people are jumping through because we've got the Senate controlled by Republicans. It wouldn't be that hard to maybe get people to move legally, not no, not fictitiously, Bridge move stuff. for a year and vote in the election. Why not? Well, which states would you move to? Move to Florida. Florida could be a swing state, although it's heavily Republican right now. It could be. Pennsylvania might be in swing. Michigan might be yeah. in swing. Maine. Yeah. I mean, look at what's that her name. Murkowski is going against the idea of having a replacement well, for RBG. And you know why yeah, she's doing it? She's like five or ten points behind. That's Alaska. And I, I like her. Her father was a senator. And uh, two terms ago, she ran against the party. They put up a candidate in the primary, and she beat the candidate. Oh, she didn't beat the candidate. She ran uh, at a write-in or something like that, and she won. To credit to her. But uh, this Ginsburg thing, I love Greg Ginsburg, but I have to say one thing. And no one has said this, so I want to go on record. And that is to say, no thanks to Ruth Ginsburg. We are going to have a constitutional crisis of no no precedent. And uh, it is because she didn't have the decency to step down from the court after 20 years, 20 years, and it would have been in Obama's administration in 2013. And uh, he would have been able to replace her with a liberal judge. Yeah, why, was, why didn't she do that? Why didn't she do that? She liked, she liked the job too much? She liked the job too much. It was all about her, all the women who love her. And uh, they wouldn't have the uh, notorious RBG uh, movie and documentary and all this kind of stuff. She was an egomaniac. Oh, that's, that's, that's a really, really, that's a really valuable point. People are doing high praise with her. Oh, and and your all point, you hear. And your point is, you look, if you're going to do something to avoid a crisis... You say what right. Kennedy said. Kennedy did this, right? Kennedy resigned and gave gave uh, Trump the was it Trump or whoever? Yeah, Trump, it was Trump, right? Didn't Kennedy resign and, and Trump re replace Kennedy? Uh, or was it Obama? I think so, yes. No, it was, no, it was no, Trump. It, wait a minute. No, no. Trump like Trump's two appointments. One was for Scalia. Maybe the other one was Kennedy. I Kennedy. Can't Kennedy. Kennedy retired. Kennedy yeah. retired. But your point is, while Obama was still in office, at the of age of, at the age of like eighty four, she's eighty four yeah. or so. She yeah, should have said eight, seven, seven years ago. At age eighty, she should have said, "I am eighty years old. I have been on this court for twenty years, and I am concerned about the future of this country, which is much more important than my position and my presence on the Supreme Court. Right. And I'm going to step down for, for the country. If she had any decency, if she had any patriotism, that's what she would have done. But no, she loved the attention she was getting with cancer or not. She loved the attention, all the documentaries." And, you know, I have been with her a couple of times in the last seven years for dinner. And on each occasion, she seemed totally out of it. Now, I'm, she was writing well, but in conversation, she was out of it. And I tried on one occasion to nicely suggest to her, hey, you know, I was at Cornell when you were there. I was at Columbia Law School when you, when you were there. I don't remember you. I was going to say, don't you remember we had a date, but I wasn't going to <laughs> she, she's, I mean, she's too short for you. She's too short she's, for you. She's too short and too ugly, and I would have been embarrassed <laughs> to have said that. But uh, anyway, yeah, I, you know what? So, so I wish somebody would step up to the plate and, and say something along the lines of what I'm saying. You're right. Rather than heaping praise on her, because the constitutional crisis that we're going to have now is totally without precedent. I don't know what the hell is going to happen. And it could lead to another term of Donald Trump. Thank you, Ruth. Wow. Another term of Donald Trump, because he is so smart. 
he's going to appoint that uh, the Barrett woman, who's uh, a court of appeals judge, who will be, a, she's attractive, she's uh, appealing to the right wing and to the women, and to the women that he was about to lose to, to uh, Biden, and uh, uh, he will get reelected. Wow, he, I have not yeah. heard, I have not heard either of those three, you've made three big points, let me just repeat them. Um, and you tell them if I get it right. Yeah. Number one, Ruth Ginsburg o- owed a constitutional imperative to a Democratic president to resign early or retire at 80 because it's the right thing to do for the party. You might say it's the right thing to do given that right. a Democrat Clinton appointed her. The right thing to do is to right. pass the baton to him. He's in the second term. You don't know what the future right. holds. You just exit right, very right. politely. She wasn't necessarily in the greatest of health. She's had cancer for quite a while. And your well, point- Well, that's another reason, right, for God's sake. Right, And your point is, she's, she's doing a movie and a bunch of stuff that's really self-aggrandizement. She had to put that yes. aside and put humility. This is a big second point. It's the personality takes precedent to what's good for the country and no one's going to say that because she's just a little tiny woman just trying to do her job. Right, right. And then the third right, point right. that you're making is that she really probably was past her prime in terms of carrying the office as well. She probably was being carried by her clerks and by the people around her. Yeah. She wasn't necessarily the sharpest pencil in the drawer at the age of 85, 86, 87. So the Supreme Court wasn't getting the best talent. I think Scalia no. stayed with the program pretty much right up to the end of whatever happened there. I mean, who he knows had whether it was foul death. play he, there, right? He had a sudden death, and that's the way it was historically. Something like that would happen, or you stepped out. And the fourth point, if you didn't conclude it, the fourth point is she is going to single-handedly get Donald Trump reelected. Yeah, I, wow. didn't want to repeat. I didn't want to repeat that fourth point just because – I think that there's so many different angles that this thing can be played. Your angle, which is new, is he appoints someone who's attractive, who's young, and who's very, very conservative. And maybe the women are like, hey, he's an okay guy. He's really gone right. out of his way, right? Right. Watch. Watch what happens. Uh, Amy Barrett, and she's going to uh, be on the court. She'll be overwhelmingly uh, uh, approved for the court. And uh, Mitch McConnell is going to get the last lap, and I'm no, sick no, about no, it all. No, no filibuster here? No filibuster by the, the gentleman from New York? No, th- thanks to Harry Reid. Thanks to Harry Reid, who decided that, hey, the world is never going to change. The Democrats are always going to have 53 votes or whatever it was. I mean, Jesus Christ, I am just shocked. And, uh, yeah, so nobody else is saying this stuff. And Susan's here. Uh, Bob, is, uh, Bob you, are, you are the contrarian here. You're like the only one that I've heard up to now. Even my mother at 90, by the way, I have to show this to you, because one of the advantages of coming to Florida is you dig out all the old photos. Oh, That's God. my mother. That, let me see. This is my mother at the age of 16. This is her at the oh, age of God. 16. And this is her father. And this is her mother, and this is her older sister dancing with her younger brother because her her husband her 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 just her husband didn't dance very well. So the bride is dancing <laughs> with her younger brother. It's such a funny such a funny statement. And my my mother is here. Of course, now if you look at her, she's ninety. It's a terrible look. Believe me. Well, I'm, let me ask you this: Did did her sister do anything else with the younger brother because he didn't do it that well, or just dance? No, no. I think they just dance. I think he was actually a early gay <laughs> from the nineteen forties. This, by the way, <laughs> this picture is nineteen forty-seven. This is right after <laughs> World War Two, and Dick Thomas, who she married, an Irishman, Dick Thomas. <laughs> he was uh, a Navy sort of war hero. He had been in some sort of accident or something. Something went wrong with him. Uh-huh. But he was on a pension from the Navy for a long time, got married, and they couldn't have kids, so she adopted kids. But you fish out these pictures, and they really <laughs> do tell a story of a different time in American life. And, you know, Ruth Ginsburg comes from that time in American life. She could be in this picture. Ruth Ginsburg is well, so, so do I. So 
so do I. And those were not bad days. They, they frankly were pretty, pretty comfortable days. And uh, general, I was going to say, but then President Eisenhower was the embodiment of that. And and somebody who provided us all with a great deal of comfort. And, you know, I would have voted for him. I would have been a Republican uh, as then, as I was later, when, when Reagan uh, ran twice. I voted for Reagan. But uh, uh, and George Herbert Walker Bush as well. I voted for him. But, uh, yeah, that's very interesting. So well, Bob, anyway, Bob I want to make this observation. How can your law firm not recognize that you are the epitome of great wisdom about American politics? <laughs> they should be like bowing to you and saying, Bob, you got to come and give a lecture to the younger people because they don't understand politics. They're all doing high praise to Ruth Ginsburg uh, and they're not seeing the bigger picture. You're, you're telling them the bigger picture. That's a really valuable thing i mean if i'm a young partner or even an old partner at the firm i'm like let's have bob come in monthly and tell us what's going on in american politics because we're, we're missing it and you're making the bigger points here about how the party is being hurt the democratic party was hurt by ginsburg choosing to stay on Right, and they have, certainly they are in the opposite direction. Not only are they are they singing her praises, but they're now talking about which Republican uh, senators can be beaten, which Democratic Democratic uh, uh, candidates should they uh, support and send money to. That's all they're doing right now: sending money, getting on the bandwagon, to, and and in addition to that, I get so frustrated. They got an email from uh, the lady uh, at uh, uh, AAJ, which is the uh, successor to the trial lawyers, plaintiffs trial lawyers, uh, asking for money. And they're, of course, jumping on board. Whereas in June, it was AAJ who filed a brief with the, with the uh, district court opposing our roundup settlement. Oh, because it was, it, was, it was a class action. And they don't like class actions. So now these fools are going to support and give money to AAJ. I mean, it's all nuts. It's and I crazy. can't get involved. It's, it's they, they have no use or interest in what I, no use for or interest in whatever I have to say. I think, anyway, that's, a big, I think that's a big loss for them, Bob, I have to say. But let me get, make another point. Why wouldn't Clinton, Bill, go to... Ruth and say, Ruth, I got to have lunch with you. We got to sit down. You pick the place, whatever. We'll get, you know, wherever we're going to go. We need to talk about the future of America. I appointed you. You're 80. Obama's in office. We can control this issue. Why didn't that happen? Or do you think that happened? And she said, no way, no how. No, I saw Clinton on TV this morning. And of course, he was also singing her praises. They did not ask him that question. But I would think he was so smart. He's thinking about number one. Number one is Bill Clinton. Uh, he doesn't give a shit about uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg's legacy. He's concerned about Bill Clinton's legacy, frankly. And I always thought that he did not want his wife to win, although he, he, he ostensibly supported his wife because he's such an egomaniac. In fact, the matter is none of these people, whether it's Clinton or Ginsburg, remember what John Kennedy said at his inaugural, ask not what America could do for you, but what can you do for America? If, if, of course they reversed it now. And if Ruth Ginsburg had any sense, she would have followed that statement and, and she would have stepped down. But no, she she's got honest to God, if Trump wins and he gets all the women voters in the suburbs, which is what he was going to just about to lose. And of course, that uh, Joe, Joe Biden, who has a um, little charisma and personality, uh, he's he's not looking that great. Um, Trump, Trump is going to be a much more dominant figure on the 29th of September in the first debate. Watch, watch Trump. He doesn't have to walk behind Biden the way he did with Hillary, but he'll find some other way to put him down, shut him up, cut him off.
dominate, dominate, because that's what he believes in. And Joe Biden will get to, to a sentence and say, oh, did I say too much? Is this, I saw him the other day in Wisconsin or, or, or one in Pennsylvania, and he actually said when he, had, when he had the podium, when he had control, when he was up there speaking, he said, oh, did I say too much? I mean, Jesus Christ. What happened here? I see an old picture of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got a storm coming in here in Florida. That's the one nasty thing about Florida. When the storms come in, they, oh. they kind of change the electricity and they change the internet here, un unfortunately. But let me let me ask you something, Bob. Do you do you think there's a lack of strategy or or leadership in the Democratic Party? Because you would think Schumer instead of screwing around with this campaign to impeach, would have said, let's put priorities on talking to Ruth and others, right? I mean, maybe that whole impeachment thing was a big waste of time, right? Well, that was a big waste of time, and Trump came out victorious. And Schumer, I knew, I have known Schumer, but the fact of the matter is he he's pretty good, but he's not that great. Uh, He's not, well, he's not the way Lyndon Johnson was when he was the leader of the Democrats in the Senate. Nobody right. nobody has, has, has been as good as Lyndon Johnson. Um, so Schumer, you know, he's probably a little better than a Harry Reid, but um, not that great. Now, he's not Mike Mansfield, and the Democrats have had a number of capable Senate leaders, but I don't know if Schumer is one of them. But who is who is the real strategist? Is there a strategist? I don't think it's Nancy Pelosi, right? Who's the real? Who's the person that? He, who's the person that's doing what you're doing? You're doing the big picture. You're like they should make you in charge of the damn party. We'd get more yeah, things right. done, right? We'd get yes. more things done. But uh, Nancy, I and I know her rather well too. I think Nancy is uh, more effective than Schumer. She certainly controls the house. Uh, is she the appropriate uh, spokesperson for the party? Probably not. Um, who is, I, I, you know, I, I can't even think of, uh, there's a very good senator from Ohio whose name, of course, I can't think of right now, uh, who I wish had run, um, but he didn't. Uh, Sherwood, Sherwood Brown, Sherwood Brown, he's a, uh, he's a capable guy. Um, but I, I, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, the guy we saw recently, Chris Murphy from Connecticut, Senator, he was pretty good. Uh, Harris is not that great. Um, although we had the, although we had an event for her, um, I don't know. Uh, it's a good question. Who who it is that could be the spokesperson for the party? But do you think Especially it's because do you think it's because they just can't appoint a leader the way Lyndon Johnson became the leader after Kennedy and everyone delegate everyone you know paid him the respect and went with him as the leader. There's just no figure like that. There's just no one in the party that commands that kind of you know natural leadership to say look with his 10 priorities and one of them is Ruth Ginsburg. Someone's got to sit down with her and tell her we'll still do her film, not to worry, but she can retire. <laughs> right? I wish, yeah, I wish somebody had done that. But, you know, they were too concerned about the optics. They were concerned about being uh, on the wrong side of the gender divide, saying the wrong thing at the wrong time. Oh, the time me too. Oh, you're me. Oh, you're me tooing her uh, out. Yeah. You're pushing her out. You can't push an old lady right. out. You can't do that to an old lady right. who's got cancer, <laughs> who's starting to lose it, yes. and who's risking the entire yes. democracy in America. We I'm saying, yeah, but our country's got to survive. But you're saying, me, me, that you, me too, me too, whatever the hell it's called. Yeah. That's right. Oh, Bob, you got to worry, maybe. man. This could go viral. This uh, Maybe I got to oh. not publish this because this could go viral <laughs> and your firm could say, no, Bob, you can't do that. You can't push an old oh. lady out. You can't make that kind of critical commentary. You can't do something that's constructively critical here that might get the Democratic Party to wake up and smell the coffee. You can't do that. I'm going to send well, this to you're, you. You're double right. check. You double check with them because I don't want you to get in any trouble here because they'll be upset that you're not following the party line, which is a bunch of bullshit, and it's why the party's in so much trouble. Well, right? that's right. And you remember how, how upset they got in June 
when we I had one of these conversations and I foolishly said something about the, the Roundup case that they oh, went brother. ballistic about. They went really crazy. I, know. I, I mean, and, you know, know, I mean, to me, I mean, to me, the beauty of podcasting is it's not scripted. We don't have a script. We don't even exchange emails about what we're going to talk about. I just I brought up, you just brought up Ruth Ginsburg. And I thought, yeah, I wonder kind of what Bob's views are on that. And you surprised me because I really <laughs> didn't think you were going to go off in this direction. But I think you're absolutely right. I think this is absolutely correct. And somebody, you got to wonder who, has to sort of say, look, let's call a spade a spade. Ruth did not do the country any favor here. They ju he just did. Oh, that's oh. absolutely right. And you have to know when to step down. So when I was 70, I stepped down and I left those guys in the firm, in the firm to figure it out for themselves. Mm. Ruth did not step down when she was 70. She did not step down when she was 80. She went on with all kinds of cancer, and I feel badly about that, but she went on to age 87 when she died two months before the election, assuring Trump another term. So, uh, you know, maybe... Well, you, maybe you, you, a, you worry, you worry. It's not absolutely the case that... Trump is going to win, but you worry that there might be a flip-flop among particularly white women because he's going to appoint a white woman, right? That's what you're saying, right? It's a, not a woman of no color, question. but it's a white woman. Well, right? he's already said he's already said that he's going to appoint a woman to the court. He's already said that, and I'm saying that among the possibilities, the clear-cut leader is Amy Barrett, and uh, you know that that will be so so compelling and. I don't know how old she is. She's probably in her early 40s, so that will give her 35 years. Same thing, you know, when they put when uh, they when George Herbert Walker put uh, put uh, Clarence Thomas on the court. Thomas was like 42 or 43, so he had 35 years, and you know, uh, so you got to pick these young people, capable, put them on the court, um, and she she at least is not Harvard, Yale. Uh, she's, she's actually Notre Dame. She's a good Catholic. And, and you know, uh, that raises another interesting question about uh, the abortion issue. I am totally uh, in, uh, in favor of women's rights, of course. I brought, I brought up a picture of Amy Barrett on my phone. She is quite- Oh, good. She is very white. She's very young. Uh, she's 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 not sort of the elitist Yale Harvard no. type. She's probably a lot more practical. You're absolutely right, Bob. That she's she's really going to sway the the white American woman voter who says, yep. "Yeah, she's quite a doll." You know, she's she's someone to oh, yeah. reckon with, right? Oh yeah, there she is. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And she she uh, she's going to turn things around, and she's pro life. Um, you know, so so it shows that Trump is a pretty savvy guy, and we also saw that in all the Bob Woodward uh, uh, conversations with him. That we're now it's terrible that Trump knew that the virus was uh, horrible, and we he knew it was much worse than the flu, but he lied about it, which is awful, and he ought to be impeached for that, but uh, he was effective. And likewise, here, he's very smart, he's very shrewd, and he knows how to take care of number one, that's him. And, and the inclusion of Amy Barrett on the Supreme Court will be a brilliant move. Uh, just the way Reagan put um, uh, uh, O'Connor on the Supreme Court, that was brilliant, that was brilliant. And uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, you gotta, you gotta give, and, and the same thing as George Herbert Walker Bush putting um, Clarence Thomas on the Supreme Court. These Republicans are much more savvy, much more cunning than the Democrats. Mitch McConnell is a lot more cunning than, than Chuck Schumer. I mean, it's, it's too bad. Right. And, uh, so let's, and, let's give five and, minutes yeah. about... Let's get five minutes about Barrett. She was born and raised in New Orleans. She's the oldest of seven. She has five sisters. Her father was an attorney for Shell Oil. Her mother was a homemaker. Her maternal grandfather, Bobby Vatt, fought in World War II. Um, she's married to a lawyer. She graduated from St. Mary's Dominican High School, so she's a Catholic. Uh, oh, yeah. She graduated magna cum laude from Rhodes College. 
and was a Phi Beta Kappa member, so she's done quite well in school. Went to Notre Dame Law School on a Kylie full tuition paid uh, scholarship. She served as the executive uh -huh. uh, editor of Notre Dame Law Review. In 1997, she graduated first in her class and earned a prize as the law school's highest honor. She was a law clerk to Silberman on the DC circuit, and she was a clerk uh -huh. for Scalia. So she was Scalia's uh, clerk. She yeah. practiced law for all of three years at a Washington DC firm. And then she started teaching as a associate professor at Washington University uh, before returning to Notre Dame. So she's practiced as a lawyer for just three years at a big firm, Miller, Cassidy, LaRocca and L Lewin in DC. That's not a lot of practice, but so goes it. And she was, she's been a law professor for the rest of her career. And then she was appointed to the Seventh Circuit by Trump in 2017. So she's got very limited judicial experience, if you think about it. May 8, 2000. So what? So what? Earl Earl Warren had zero. Hugo right. Black had zero. Right. Earl Douglas had zero. I mean, some of the great justices had zero experience at a court. Right. Who needs it? I mean, right. you know, I I was uh, I I think it was clever of Trump for many reasons, to throw out the name of uh, the senator from Texas. He supported that guy who ran against him. Right. And, uh, yeah, and it was, it was, it was going to uh, be a supporter. So he's very smart. Uh, but what he would do in the second term is frightening. God only knows what Trump is going to do in his second term. Well, the controversial thing in the article about uh, Amy Barrett is – in Cantor versus Barr, which is a Seventh Circuit case, she wrote in a lengthy dissent in favor of gun ownership rights for felons. She's saying they should, under Second Amendment, have a right to own a gun. That's pretty scary. I think even in Florida, people would be like, if they're a felon, A, they shouldn't vote, and B, they should never get a gun, period, full stop. And she wrote a dissent in that case, so it's pretty wild if you think about it. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, she's going to be right there with, with the uh, right wingers. Um, it's uh, the possibility of the chief justice of Roberts uh, going to the left a little bit is very strong, I think, compared to these people that, that Trump would have. And he did already do that twice in connection with Obamacare. He did it with a, a couple of or three cases this year that were very important. So Roberts may be okay and may join uh, in the tradition of a Republican chief justice like Earl Warren uh, being a very liberal. So um, Gorsuch is not to be written off. I think he could right. be a possible one. Uh, not, not Kavanaugh yet. Kavanaugh is still um, struggling from the, the, the horrible attack right. on him by that idiotic woman right. of whom we don't hear anymore. Right. I forgot her name, but oh, oh my God, she yeah, was terrible. What a story. Yeah, what a story. I agree with you. Quite a story. Yeah, as, as Susan says, what woman in her 50s or 60s or older hasn't had some guy try to lie down on top of her? I mean, you know, every, <laughs> every that was common practice. Yeah. I mean, then, back then. Uh, when men were still men. It's you can't, you night. can't, Bob, you can't talk this way, man. You're going to get yourself thrown out of the yeah. state of California if you keep talking this way. <laughs> you realize that? You're going to have to come here to Florida. You're going to have to move to Florida, man, and homestead a $10 million house here. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. You're right. Susan's always worried we're going to someday lose our house because of my behavior. In Florida, Susan, they can't take it away from you. Yeah, me. you can you can get well, yourself I'm, a nice I'm house right on the water and homestead it for 10, 20 million bucks. That's a, no, that's right. I've always liked uh, Boca Raton. I like Palm Beach. I mean, I don't think those places are so terrible, frankly. Uh, we might have to move there. We might have to. For tax reasons. <laughs> well, let me tell you, we if you come to Florida, if you come to Florida, I'll give you a tour of the alligator swamps. You'll get a real kick out of it. You'll get a real kick out of it. Oh, yeah. And we could do some yeah. we could do some pawn shop uh, uh, crawl and and buy up all of the <laughs> pre uh, emancipation procl proclamation weapons that are available without registration. <laughs> 
Seriously, yeah. there's a whole market. There's a whole untapped market there that <laughs> I think I'm going to seize upon and corner. I'm probably going to put five hundred thousand dollars into a fund that just buys up all those weapons. You notice I've got the the flag here, the original thirteen colonies. I found that at a pawn shop, and the guy said, "Just take just take it off my back for twenty bucks." I think that's probably a twenty thousand dollar antique behind me there, Bob. Oh, I, just I didn't think, know what he I had. Think that was it. That's a great purchase. That was a very good purchase. I remember as a kid going to Florida with my folks and watching the Seminole Indians wrestle the alligators. That was uh, the little display for the kids. So yeah, yeah. But they didn't have they didn't have uh, uh, other people. It was the, it was the Seminole Indians <laughs> hand wrestling with the alligators. Oh yeah, that's a real nice thing to that show was, your children. That was a yeah. That, the guy gets yeah. Eaten. <laughs> no, no, the Seminole Indians always won. <laughs> so, Bob, let's let's sum up. Point one, uh, we all are sad that RGB has left us. However, she's about seven years too late in doing the resignation, and instead she set up a perfect storm that may uh, propel uh, Mr. Trump into his second term. And who could have ever predicted this? But she did tell her granddaughter, like, this really matters. Please tell them that oh, my yeah. last wish was that they wait until the results of the election. She must have felt so guilty about not doing the right thing, as you put oh, it. No, yes, and she yes. said to her granddaughter, she left a letter to her granddaughter oh, yeah. to read publicly that I really would like this to happen. Like, Donald Trump and Mitch McConnell are going to even right. read that letter. You know, they're supposed to. Yeah, right. They're supposed they're, to they're cry really over the decision. Yeah, they're struggling with the letter. They're trying to comply with her last wish. Oh Lots come on! Luck. She's Lots not even. She's there. not even buried, and they're like writing up the nomination list. You can see what I they're know. doing. I mean, they I did know. it actually three weeks ago. He published three weeks ago a list That's of right. twenty jurists, and Barrett was right at the top. So you're absolutely <laughs> right that he must have gotten the message that she's going downhill fast because, you know, she probably started going downhill fast a couple of weeks ago, is my guess. Right, right. And the second, no, thing, totally the second thing that's true is we're going into the October term and they're going to do it again by phone. All oral arguments are going to be by phone and not in person. So, you know, they're going to use that argument to say, yeah, we've really got to rush to get Amy Barrett on the bench because, hey, there's a lot of work ahead. For all my well, also, there could to do, be, right? There could be a there could be a four four outcome uh, of the, by the Supreme Court with respect to the election, and so they need to get her on the court. They right. need that fifth vote. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And then and then the further complication is, RGB probably already appointed her clerks for the following term, and now <laughs> Barrett, who comes in, is not going to go for any of those liberal clerks. So there's no. probably six or eight clerks saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, this was our chance <laughs> to work for the Supreme Court, and then RGB right. goes and dies on us. What are we supposed to do now? <laughs> so they're probably you know, sort of sharpening their resume to maybe take a regular job somewhere. Oh, <laughs> oh woe is yeah. me, woe is me, Bob, <laughs> woe is me. Can you imagine yeah. the tears that are being shed? Yeah. Oh, that's all true. Uh, very interesting, Jack. Well, I'm glad we had this conversation. Yeah, we got we got to do it again. I'm, I'm booking, I'm booking my it. Sundays with you. I'm, I'm booking right. my Sundays. I'm not going fishing on Sunday mornings for alligators. Instead, I'm booking the time right before. Go to church. Go to church, Jack. And, okay, uh, you, you guys take, take care, care of your brother. You look great. You guys, you guys take care of each other. Tune in next time on the Valley Current.